1977 was a beginning and an end. It was the year the Cosmos soared dramatically to major league status as first thousands, then tens of thousands thronged the giant stadium. And even as the crowds grew and the passion increased, the man most responsible for the explosion was coming to the end of his fabulous career. For Pelé, the crowds and adulation were the fulfillment of a mission as New Jersey Meadowlands became Cosmos country. Soccer became a carnival of picnics, parties, togetherness, and fun. More than a game, it became a happening. There were brilliant moments in the early season. Giorgio Quinalia continued his goal-scoring feats that led the North American Soccer League in 1976. And there was always Pelé to add his special touch of magic. But there were frustrating times as well. Golden scoring opportunities wasted. Shots off the posts, shootouts shot down, passes set astray. Sometimes the ball simply refused to do what the Cosmos wanted it to do. Like a slumbering giant, though, the Cosmos were always capable of striking. And when they did, it was devastating. But yet, a key ingredient was missing. That ingredient was Franz Beckenbauer, one of the world's most famous players. Beckenbauer's arrival received worldwide attention. The plane trip to Tampa, where he would begin his career with the Cosmos, included an unusual number of reporters and photographers. For once, even Pelé was overshadowed. For Beckenbauer, the first game under a white-hot Florida sun in the glare of the world spotlight was a traumatic affair. Fans flocked to Tampa Stadium to witness the event and to spur their rowdies to an impressive 4-2 victory. It was a new experience for the West German star who had captained his nation's team to a World Cup championship and his club, Bayern Munich, to three European titles. With little time for preparation, he still managed to display some of the elegance and artistry of a star, making a spectacular save to prevent a goal. Then in the closing moments of the contest, he scored his first North American Soccer League goal, an omen of things to come. I think my challenge here in the United States is very, very uh, bigger than in Europe. Uh, maybe I can help here the new sport, the soccer in the United States is a, is a new sport. And this was a reason too, uh, I, I think, it's a, it's a good team and uh, Pele, I am uh, the biggest fan from Pele. He's the greatest soccer player in the history of sport. Uh, maybe the greatest sportsman. Maybe you can compare him only, maybe, with Muhammad Ali. I am very proud to play with Pele together in a team. In the weeks that followed, Beckenbauer began to know his teammates and the Cosmos' fortunes turned. And as they prospered, the crowds grew in record numbers. Sunday, June 19th, a brilliant sunny afternoon for the rematch against the Rowdies. And Pele responds to the big game atmosphere with a classic performance. Pele registers his first half-trick for the Cosmos, and at last the ball seems to be bouncing the Cosmos way. Skeptics who said the Cosmos and their crowd were flukes had only to wait a week to be proven wrong. 
Over 57,000 turn out the following Sunday as the Los Angeles Aztecs and Georgie Best come to town. The Cosmos offense is in high gear early as Vito Dimitrievich finds the net. And again, it is Pelé reveling in the pressure as he had so many times before in Brazil. Responding to the huge throng for the second consecutive Sunday afternoon, Pelé rings up another three-goal hat-trick and celebrates with a now familiar exultant leap of triumph. adds the final touch in a 5-2 victory. Nobody doubted now, this was indeed Cosmo's country. Probably the most dramatic rise in the attendance has been over the past year, with um, Pelé starting the whole ball rolling when you see Giant Stadium with 62,000 57,000, 45,000 uh, uh, people coming to watch the game. I think there is a special feeling because it is Pelé's last year. Uh, a lot of the players are aware of what Pelé has done for the game of soccer in the United States, what Pelé has done for the players themselves. So to be playing, number one, to be playing with them on the same team is like a dream come true to, to most of the players. To have him here and to realize that it's his last year, I think everybody's putting out that much more and trying to win the championship that much more because it is Pelé's final year and we'd like him to leave the way he deserves to leave as a champion. The defense did its part and did it well, like this play by Captain Werner Roth. Brazilian star Carlos Alberto, acquired late in the season, brought stability. Shep Messing and Earl Yassin provided spectacular saves and goals. Others contributed too, like Nelsie Moraes and Bobby Smith, as the Cosmos proved they could not only score goals, but prevent them. The Cosmos came into the stretch with a new coach, Eddie Fromani, and the need to win three straight games to reach the playoffs. First Portland invades Giant Stadium. The Cosmos apply early pressure and it pays off as Steve Hunt is fouled in the penalty area. The role of taking pressure-filled penalty shots falls on the broad shoulders of Giorgio Quinalia, and he drills the shot home. Ron Speckenbauer leads Steve Hunt with a long downfield pass, and Hunt adds a second goal, giving the Cosmos their first must-win game. Final score, two to nothing. Next, it's Washington, and Canalia sets the pace, thundering to a Carlos Alberto pass and booming it into the net en route to a hat trick. The Cosmos put on a dazzling display in an 8-2 run. One more victory to enter the playoffs, the Cosmos host the Connecticut Bicentennial. The Super Trio, Beckenbauer, Pelé, and Canalia produce a crucial goal late in the first half with Giorgio's tenacity the telling factor.
Mud passes and Canalia misses a header. A play that weeks later would have a far different result. The Cosmos' entire front line combines for the important second goal as Tony Field hits the upper right-hand corner. Field sets up Pelé for a final insurance tally, and the Cosmos are playoff bound. Once again, the Tampa Bay Rowdies are the obstacle as the playoffs open in Giant Stadium. For Pelé, it might be his last NASL game, for if the Cosmos lose, their season is over. An early chance is lost as Kevin Egan of the Rowdies makes a last second save. The game is scoreless at halftime, and in the Cosmos locker room, Coach Eddie Fermani talks strategy. We're leaving people in the midfield free and that's where they're causing us the problems. Bobby, if you pick up one in the middle, you stay with him, and then we push all the other people up. The people up front, let's give them the ball as much as we can. They're the boys that have done the damage for us. The team's only as good as you allow them to play. The Cosmos are ready for the second half as Pelé breaks the ice and celebrates in his inimitable fashion. puts a cross into the penalty area and Kinalia once again displays his prolific scoring prowess with a powerful side wheeling shot. Pele adds to coup de gras with classic dribbling and an unerring shot as the Cosmos win 3-0 to advance to the second round of the playoffs. There can be no faltering now. Pre-game tensions are eased by loosening up within the confines of the locker room. They're all there waiting for you. No worries. No worries. Against Fort Lauderdale, the Cosmos offense starts fast. Steve Hunt receives a perfect pass from Pelé and drills a hard shot that rockets into the net. Ron Speckenbauer maintains control with perseverance and strength. Then flicks a shot out of a wall of defenders to make it two to nothing. Moments later, Beckenbauer displays his dazzling world-class form, dribbling through the striker's defense and setting up an easy tap-in for Kinnight. was on as the offense demoralized the visitors and rolled to an 8-3 triumph, one that even the great Gordon Banks was powerless to prevent. 
The largest crowd in the history of North American soccer. Nearly 78,000 looked on in awe of the Cosmos power. The final touch was added by young American Gary Etherington, scoring his first NASL goal. was alive with soccer, but the road ahead was loaded with pitfalls in Fort Lauderdale as the strikers took a lead and the pressure was on. The Cosmos surged into attack, but couldn't equalize as Gordon Banks saves and close misses keep the strikers on top. Finally, a Pelé free kick squirts through the wall of defenders and passes the screen keeper. The Cosmos' joy and relief was short-lived as Banks continues to sparkle and the strikers recapture the lead 2-1. to one. With a Fort Lauderdale victory imminent, Kinalia comes through once more as he muscles the tying goal past Banks and into the net. After a scoreless overtime, the Cosmos' playoff hopes ride on a shootout Jet Messing is brilliant, stopping four striker shots. <laughs> Terry Garbett scores the clincher, and the Cosmos eliminate Fort Lauderdale, advancing to the semifinals against the Rochester Lancers. The series opens in Rochester, and Kinalia is once again the man of the hour, scoring the initial Cosmos goal of the game in a 2-1 victory. So for the final time in the 1977 NASL season, the Cosmos come home to another full house. Eddie Fermani prepares his troops for the big game. When they come forward, they open out for us and then we hit them from behind. Don't get involved in anything for God's sake. Just get on with the game. We'll try and get the balls. Just push right in front of you so when you go, the balls are there in front of you. Tell him to say, Georgia, sometimes hold, sometimes go. Eh? Just put the balls in front of Georgia, because Georgia, when he, when he goes, he wants the ball in front of him, not yeah. behind him, you know. So even with Stevie Hunt, you see when Stevie breaks, you knock all those beautiful balls just in front of him, put all the balls in there for him, so they go straight in goal. I try. Oh, yeah. For Pelé, it would be his last NASL game in Cosmos country. Not even a torrential rain could dampen the enthusiasm in the Meadowlands as the Cosmos seek to clear the one remaining hurdle to Soccer Bowl 77. The hunt Canalia combination once again provides the crucial opening goal. the peak of their seasonal form. Hunt and Canalia shred the Lancer defense again. Pelé teams with Vito Dmitrievich for a third Cosmos goal. Pelé adds a fitting final touch 
as he converts a Rochester defensive air with a mid-air bullet shot to send the rain-soaked crowd home reveling in a 4-1 victory. Cosmos, there was one more hill to conquer. This team to win a championship must all play together. No single players, it must work as a unit. And if they work as a unit, it'll go a long way because any team in the world that works as a unit always gets ahead. On to Soccer Bowl 77 in Portland, Oregon. The sellout crowd is partisan to the Seattle Sounders. But the Cosmos fans are demonstrative cheering their team on in anticipation of one more victory. The expected defensive struggle turns out to be anything but that as both teams display wide open attacks resulting in frequent scoring opportunities. Goalkeepers Tony Chersky of the Sounders and Shep Messing of the Cosmos proved to be equal to every thrust early in the contest. Then, as so often occurs in games of this magnitude, a critical error turns the tide of play. Chersky dives at Steve Hunt's feet to break up a charge. Chersky seems in control, but for a moment, the goalkeeper loses his concentration, turning his back to Hunt and putting the ball on the ground. The ever alert Hunt rushes in to scramble the ball into the net, tapping it over the line in spite of a desperate tackle by the startled keeper. The Cosmos and their fans celebrate the unexpected goal while Chersky is left to reflect on the vital mistake. But the Sounders fight back, and a pretty three-way passing play sets up Tommy Ward, who drills the tying goal past Messi. However, Messing was to prove remarkable in the clutch this championship day, thwarting the Sounders time and again with acrobatic saves. Recalling the play that had come so close weeks earlier, Steve Hunt and Giorgio Kinaya combine once again with a cross for Giorgio to head in the tie-breaking goal. Cosmos had persevered. In a season of unbelievable impact on the soccer world, they had reached their most cherished goal, the North American Soccer League Championship for their fans, for themselves, and for Pelé. A triumphant conclusion to an historic season. championship reaffirmed the Cosmos status as one of the world's most famous teams. They played an international schedule of exhibition matches in Giant Stadium and on the road. In great demand the world over, the Cosmos played in four continents in 1977. Indeed, the Cosmos were North America's soccer ambassadors to the world, climaxing their globe trotting in Japan and then by becoming the first United States professional team to play in the People's Republic of China. It was a journey of goodwill with huge crowds turning out in Peking and Shanghai. The Chinese team returned the visit with a contest in the Meadowlands. Pelé's former team, Santos of Brazil, played a home-and-home -home series with the Cosmos gaining an impressive 2-1 win on October the 1st. But the story of that game was far more significant than the result. 
it was the farewell game for Pele. I lost part of my body because always I'm involved in soccer all my life, 22 years in soccer. And uh, when do you see the time to retire, to, to, to stop? That's it's not good. But fortunately, I can stop in good shape. So it was finally to end this fabled career that had become sports folklore throughout the world. They came great and small for this farewell tribute. Heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, and another sellout crowd. They happen in soccer here. I think this belongs to the United States people, not only to me, not only the soccer players. I think all the Americans have part in these big things in my life. Thank you very much. For Pelé, it was a time of joy and a time of sadness. As he entered the arena for the final time, amidst the thunderous acclamation of a multitude of adoring disciples, an outpouring of love experienced by only the chosen few. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very happy to be here with you in this great moment in my life. I want to thank you all, everything what you offered to me. I believe love is more important than what we can take in life. Everything passed. Please say to me, say with me, three times, love. Love. And love. Thank you. A moment for emotion that begins with Pelé and reaches out to teammates, fans, and an international television audience. There was to be one more golden moment, one final Pelé goal. Late in the first half, a free kick against his old teammates, the ball swerving around the wall, the net billowing. One more time, he is mobbed in celebration of a goal. One more lap of honor. There is one more triumphant ride on the shoulders of teammates past and present. Pelé had come to bring soccer to the United States and his fondest hopes had been realized. This is truly the ultimate. A dream fulfilled. Expectations were high in 1978 as crowds continued to throng to the Meadowlands and other stadiums around the NASL in record numbers. Dramatic proof that the Cosmos and the soccer explosion they had created were not a fluke. The Cosmos attracted over one million fans to Giant Stadium, an average of 47,395 per game. Pelé was merely a spectator now but there were new faces to complement the remaining members of the 1977 championship team as the Cosmos tried to become the first NASL team to capture consecutive crowns. 
Midfielder Vladislav Bogicevic had a goal and four assists in the season opener against Fort Lauderdale, while Steve Hunt and Giorgio Quinalia both registered three goal hat tricks. The Cosmos sent a shockwave around the league, serving notice of things to come with a devastating 7 0 win. What had been a good team a year earlier now appeared to be almost invincible. Tulsa supplied stiff opposition, but a free kick goal by Franz Beckenbauer was enough for a 1 0 victory. Dennis Stewart made his Cosmos debut with a sensational diving header for a goal against Dallas. Stewart then played give and go with Bogicevic and backheeled the ball for Giorgio Canaglia to score in a 3-1 decision over the tornado. A strong Detroit team was surprised by defender Werner Roth's second career goal as the Cosmos prevailed 2 to nothing. Their sixth win in a row to start the year and their 15th consecutive home victory over two seasons. Sunday, May 21st was Franz Beckenbauer Day. I'm very proud and it's a big honor for me to have this wonderful day and to, cel to celebrate with the Beautiful, beautiful people, people and the beautiful, beautiful crowds in the world. 71,219 fans turned out to pay tribute to one of the brightest superstars in the Cosmos galaxy. It was also a replay of Soccer Bowl 77 as the Cosmos faced Seattle. But it was newcomer Dennis Stewart making it look easy, converting a defensive lapse into an unassisted goal. The day was climax as the man they came to honor, Franz Beckenbauer, set up Kinalia for the final goal in Giorgio's hat-trick performance and a 5-1 victory for the Cosmos. The home streak continued against Rochester as this Tourt, Robert Iarussi, Steve Hunt scoring play typified excellent teamwork in another 5-1 romp. Vancouver came in with one of the best records in the league but fared no better as Bogey teamed with Canalia to open the scoring. The eventual game winner was a booming shot by defender Santiago Formosa. Philadelphia proved a stubborn opponent, but Quinalia pounced on the rebound of a Beckenbauer shot for yet another Cosmos victory. Number 19 in a row at home. Number 20 was a 6-1 romp over Washington. Then the Cosmos faced the Caribou of Colorado and plays like this between Dennis Stewart and NASL Rookie of the Year Gary Etherington spelled another home win, this time 3-1. The Los Angeles Aztecs were next to fall on the strength of a beautiful Kinalia goal volleyed in off a Bogicevic pass. Bogey leaped high to a tour corner kick to head in this goal as California became the Cosmos' 23rd straight victim at home, setting an all-time NASL record. The streak was in definite jeopardy when the team men came to Giant Stadium. They had beaten the Cosmos in an overtime thriller just a week earlier. Then, too, there was the personal battle between the league's top two scorers, Kinalia and Mike Flanagan. Flanagan got the early edge for the team men. The Cosmos tried valiantly to get back into the game, but New England's veteran goalkeeper, Kevin Keelan, was spectacular. Two later goals, including a soaring shot by Brian Alderson, sealed the verdict, and the Cosmos streak had finally been halted. Giorgio Quinalia's third NASL season was his best, smashing every scoring record. And with his ascendancy, the Cosmos reached their greatest heights. I love to score goals, and uh, it's a... Uh... Something that you can always remember, you know, when you grow old, you say, well, that year I won a score scoring championship and it's a record. 
and it's nice, you know, it's a good feeling. But the most important thing to me is, you know, the recognition is on the field. If the fans applaud you and they're satisfied with you, that's the recognition that I like more. Canaglia gave the fans plenty of reason to applaud the powerful Italian striker who became an American citizen in 1978, tore apart opposing defenses in his record-scoring spree. Whether the goals were opportunistic ones or booming shots striking with cannonball fours, Canaglia hit the net 34 times in regular season play, breaking a mark that had stood for a decade. He was power personified demoralizing opposing defenses with his long strides and physical strength. And after each goal, Giorgio provides his own special celebration that's unique, varied and always crowd-pleasing. One of the Cosmos' newest heroes was Dennis Stewart. Why had he chosen to leave a starring role in England to play here? Uh, well, I believed at my stage in the, the career it was, uh, it was important to have ambition. And I felt within the United States of America, the Cosmos were the number one club with ambition. I believed in the number one team in that situation, I wanted to be with the best. The first season in uh, NASL soccer has been really tremendous, apart from the, the first half of the season where I had a lot of frustration regarding injuries. I must admit the enthusiasm shown by the, the crowd as a whole has been tremendous. The players need to know that the fans are behind them, and uh, I must admit we've had some tremendous crowds here this season, and they, they've been with us all the year. George's feelings for the crowds turned out to be a mutual admiration society. The throngs that flocked to the Meadowlands oohed and awed his every move. He was perpetual motion, darting here and there over the field of green, leaving startled defenders helpless and frustrated as he brought another dimension to the Cosmos' high-powered offense. Aggressive and amazingly agile, Tort not only set up goals with his flank attacks, but he scored them as well. While the offense reaped most of the headlines, the defense was much improved. One of its stars was team captain Werner Roth. Playing in his seventh season with the Cosmos, the defensive-minded center back was at the top of his game. Well, collectively, we have, I think, the best defense in the league. We definitely have the best defense that we've ever had on the uh, Cosmos team. Individually, you have players of, uh, starting out with Carlos Alberto, being the safety valve on the team gives us the character that we have. I think he gives us, he gives everybody else the confidence. He gives us the confidence to concentrate on just what our separate assignments are. And he closes up gaps that the defense might leave by following their individual players. Players like Bobby Smith, Robert Iarushi, Nelson Moraes, uh, Santiago Formosa and myself, I think are strong in our separate assignments in covering players. The two goalkeepers, Jack Brand and Harold Yassin, have played tremendously for us this year. The mid-season acquisition of Italian star Pino Wilson brought further stability to the defensive core. Wilson took charge wherever he was required to play. His versatility and his work rate provided a solid contribution. Terry Garbutt, the Cosmos' hard-nosed midfielder, was yet another defensive tower of strength. In keeping with their quest for the best in soccer, the Cosmos signed superstar Johan Cruyff for exhibition game action. Cruyff's debut would be no less than a gala extravaganza with an all-star assemblage of players from 1978 World Cup competition. Cruyff responded by displaying some of his dazzling skills in a game that received worldwide attention. The other Cosmos superstars were prime too, as Beckenbauer fed Kinalia for a spectacular side-winding goal.
In the end, it was fitting that Cripe would create the tying goal with a marvelous piece of footwork, leaving it for newly acquired Portuguese ace Nino to drive the ball into the net. a 2-2 tie in a memorable and brilliant display of soccer. Bogey! The Cosmos rolled into the playoffs with a first place finish and a 24-6 record. But their initial obstacle was last season's soccer bowl opponent, Seattle. It was a time of nerves and tension for coach Eddie Fermanagh. Stop pushing about, man. Get the bloody balls up there. Cosmos explosion. Hunt to Bogey for a magnificent header makes it 2-0. No! The Cosmos are on fire as Beckenbauer dribbles through the Sounders defense for the third tally. Dmitrievich boots in goal number four. And Ricky Davis sets up Steve Hunt for the final score in a 5-2 decision. The Cosmos pass their first playoff test with flying colors. Next come the Minnesota Kicks in a home-and-home -home series beginning in Bloomington. The high-flying Cosmos are confident. I think we're going there very positive, going there to win it. are embarrassed nine to two but what we have to do now is we have to take stock of ourselves and we have to realize that we have to put the talent as well as the hard work and effort together I paid my dues time after time I've done my sentence but committed no crime and bad mistakes each scoring twice, the Cosmos dominate the kicks 4 to nothing to force a sudden-death mini-game. 
The crowd comes to its feet with every attack as both teams have opportunities to win it. Yarushi shoots just wide, and Kinalia's header is cleared at the last moment. But Minnesota's Alan Woolley comes closest, and only the save of the year by Jack Brand keeps the overtime score. comes down to a shootout. Five chances each. The pressure is immense. beats Jack Brand on Minnesota's first attempt for a 1-0 lead. Bogey tries to retaliate, but kicks goalkeeper Tino Letiri makes the save. Letiri maintains the hot hand in the shootout as he stops Dennis Stewart. Steve Hunt. Nelsie Moraes. The Cosmos are 0 for 4. But Brand rises to the occasion and keeps the Cosmos alive with saves on Ron Futcher, Charlie George, Ace Nesselenge, and then a sliding stop against Greg Villa when a Minnesota goal would have ended it. Cosmos have but one last chance. Five seconds and 35 yards separate the Cosmos from elimination. The shooter, number five, Carlos Alberto, was never before participated in a shootout. Stay alive if he misses the season's over. Letary out. Shot. Go! Carlos Alberto has tied it. The Cosmos stay alive. The pressure now on Jack Brand. Tied at one kick apiece. The sixth kick. Captain Allen Merrick. Out comes Brand. Merrick shot. Save! A brilliant save by Jack Brand. And now the Cosmos have a chance to win it. Franz Beckenbauer. Now it's up to Franz. A man that knows pressure. He knows World Cup pressure, European Cup pressure. Now he could win it for the Cosmos. Beckenbauer. Letary out. Franz. Fake shot. Incredible comeback. The Cosmos advance to Portland. The Cosmos still alive on a Beckenbauer goal in a tremendous shootout. Thus, the Cosmos return to Portland, scene of last year's glory, this time to play the Timbers in the conference finals before a jam-packed crowd in and outside Civic Stadium. In an extremely tight, evenly played, close-checking contest, the Cosmos register the only goal of the game on this second-half shot by Dennis Tewart. It's 
back to Cosmos country for the second game of the series before the Meadowlands faithful. Steve Hunt sends a high crossing ball to Bogicevic, but Lady Luck sides with Portland and goalkeeper Mick Poole. The Cosmos keep the pressure on as Dennis Tuart attracts the Timbers' defense with a solo dash. Then feeds an unmarked Kinalia, and the Cosmos take the lead. <laughs> Tuart and Dmitrievich play give and go, with Dennis proving he's got more than just moves as he muscles his way in for the Cosmos' second score. on as the Cosmos overwhelm Portland in the closing moments. Steve Hunt, Cali's goal number three. Franz Beckenbauer chips in goal number four. Nino booms home goal number five as the Cosmos roar into Soccer Bowl 78 in the Meadowlands. There's a festive atmosphere at Giant Stadium as a Soccer Bowl record throng of almost 75,000 turns out to see the Cosmos meet an old nemesis, the Tampa Bay Rowdies, the final obstacle in this championship quest. Once again, the rivalry proves intense as the teams probe for the first opening that can provide the key to victory. Goalkeeper Winston DuBose makes a diving save and the Rowdies defense staves off the Cosmos' initial thrusts. But the Cosmos maintain attacking momentum and the breakthrough is at hand as Steve Hunt's long pass is volleyed past DuBose by Dennis Tuart. A second view of Soccer Bowl's critical opening goal shows Hunt's pass leads to it perfectly and the well-placed shot is unstoppable. At the Cosmos end, Jack Brand is having another superb game, foiling attack after attack and taking charge of the defense. Just before halftime, Bogicevic to tour to Hunt almost clicks, and Kinalia is the right man in the right spot to head the rebound past the frustrated defenders. second half, the Rowdies retaliate, capitalizing on a rare Cosmos mistake to score on a brilliant swerving shot by Mirandinha. <laughs> Tension mounts as the Rowdies attempt to rally, but Robert Iarushi and Warner Roth set up the MVP of the playoffs, Dennis Stewart, with a clinching goal. As 
the final seconds tick away, the Cosmos and their fans celebrate a second consecutive title. The questions were answered. The doubts erased. The Cosmos were once more champions of the North American Soccer League. is Cosmos Country. Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands was alive with the sounds of soccer all season long. Winners of two consecutive NASL championships, the Cosmos were in search of number three with the support of soccer's most loyal fans. Not only did the Cosmos play before more than one million spectators during the regular season for the second straight year, but over two million people saw the Cosmos in person worldwide. The opening of the season was punctuated with action beyond regulation time. Seninos overtime goal defeated San Diego on the West Coast. Then two successive heart-stopping shootouts went the way of the Cosmos in Washington and Atlanta. The champions were rolling with seven wins in a row and nine successes in their first ten matches. Cosmos fans had new international stars to cheer for and Marinho captured their imaginations immediately with his daring length of the field rushes and a three-goal hat-trick in his first home appearance. Marinho provided all the offense in an exciting 3-2 victory over the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. The explosive speed and sleight of foot of Sinino added another dimension to the Cosmos attack force. Joining the Cosmos from Portugal's first division championship club in mid-1978, Sininho is another international star who has become a favorite in the Meadowlands. But the single most significant happening is the development of American talent. And the player who epitomizes the best is Ricky Davis. In only his second year, 20-year-old Davis is a star on the rise. Right now I'm signed on an amateur contract with the Cosmos as compared to what most of the players are, professional contracts. And what this means is, is enabling me to play in Olympic qualifying games. And I began playing soccer at a very young age, uh, especially for Americans. I began playing when I was six years old. I feel very fortunate because soccer was established in my area. I began playing it because I enjoyed the continual action, the challenges that it had brought up to me, and I was using my feet instead of my hand. Last year was my first year in the league, and I did spend quite a bit of time sitting on the bench. It was more of a learning year, and as far as my development had been planned, it was something that I would have to put up with. I would have to understand that I'm going to have to take a set in the second seed to a lot of guys on the team. It changed from last year sitting on the bench to this year uh, playing in every game, and I think I'm the only one that's played in every single game. It's, it's an honor not only to be able to play with the guys that I'm playing with, but to say that I've played as much as they have. As a young American, uh, sharing or playing on the same field as Beckenbauer, Bogey, and Nishkins, it's like a dream come true. I used to remember back in 1966 where I originally saw Franz play for the first time, and at that time I kind of idolized his style. Now Ricky Davis can idolize Franz Beckenbauer from a position on the same field as his teammate, while Franz has some kind words for his midfield partner. 
Ricky Davis, he, his development is tremendous in the, since the last year. And so he's a, he's a very important part in, in our game. And I enjoy it now very, very much to play in this team, especially in the midfield. I feel very honored that I'm able to play with these guys. And uh, I think that it's just a sign that American soccer will ultimately be some, something one day. Another American player who delighted the crowds with his scoring ability was forward Mark Liveridge. Liveridge was the Cosmos' third highest scorer with 10 goals and 9 assists. When it comes to scoring, Giorgio Quinaglia is in a class by himself. The Cosmos switched to a 4-4-2 alignment on the field during 1979, and the direct result was more maneuvering room for Giorgio Quinaglia. In the 4-4-2 uh, situation, uh, Franz and uh, Dennis have always said about this. They've always wanted to play this kind of, uh, of a formation, but we've had a lot of problems in the past with other people that didn't, uh, we didn't see eye to eye on, on this thing. I think that everywhere in the world now they play 4-4-2, and if you have the, the right man in the right position, it's the best formation that you could have. Giorgio powered his way to 26 goals in regular season play and became the third Cosmos player to be honored with a special day. And the only thing I can say is I'm very proud and honored to be part of the best club and the best fans in the world. Thank you very much. Quinalia's running mate, Dennis Tuart, was the second highest scorer for the season with 16 goals. Tuart continued to mystify opponents with his quick moves and deceptive shots. A memorable highlight was the magnificent swerving shot over the keeper against the Portland Timbers. Ex-Cosmo Stevie Hunt led England's Coventry City in an international match against his old teammates. The Cosmos surprised the soccer world with an outstanding performance. Ricky Davis and Carlos Alberto gave the Cosmos an upset win, even though Quinalia and Beckenbauer were sidelined. The Cosmos won convincingly, and as Carlos Alberto explains, international matches have great significance. In Brazil, all newspaper, all radio, television told, told about it. The, the Cosmos team, not about Argentina. For the Brazilian, the Cosmo is better than Argentina. This is very important for us. Did Carlos Alberto mention Argentina? On June 6, the World Cup champions visited the Meadowlands. It was a night that crackled with excitement as a gala flag-waving crowd of more than 70,000 came to see the world's best. For those who figured it was just a question of how badly Argentina would beat the Cosmos, it was an eye-opener. The Cosmos played them dead even for 88 minutes. But Argentine captain Daniel Passarella headed this shot in with only two minutes remaining to give the World Cup champions a hard-fought one nothing victory over a tenacious Cosmos team. Carlos Alberto was, as usual, the anchor man for a stingy Cosmos defensive unit. Voted the league's top defender for the second straight year, Carlos Alberto is poetry in motion. Mr. Dependable on defense, Carlos Alberto's offensive forays are few and far between. But when the moment is right, he makes his move with the decisiveness of a striker. One of Carlos Alberto's new teammates in the back line, Vim Reisbergen, was quite impressed by NASL soccer. In this first year, I see that it's, it's much, much better than, than I thought it was. And 
the, the competition is, is very tough. We have a lot of good teams now in this league and uh, I think next year it will be, will be better. It's, it's not easy to mark it very, very close and very tight for 90 minutes. But it's, it's my job and I, I like to do it for the, for, the, for the Cosmos. A star with the Dutch national team in the 1974 and 78 World Cup, Reisbergen was a welcome addition, as was the versatile Eskandarian. I think best player in the world now play in the United States, North American Soccer League. And it's very difficult, I think. I can play in the defense every, every position, but I play this season sometimes right fullback, sometimes left fullback. It's no problem for me. Eskandarian's efforts solidified a defense that would be without Captain Werner Roth out all year with knee surgery. Eskandarian, Marinho, Reisbergen, and Alberto were the Cosmos version of the fearsome foursome. Cosmos country welcomed yet another international superstar when Johan Nieskens joined the team in midseason. One of the major forces behind Holland's rise to soccer prominence, Nieskens has a five-year contract with the Cosmos. His fiery, hustling brand of play added an aura of excitement and intensity to every game. My job is uh, first to play well. I think a team must be grown together. He must be uh, uh, a couple of runners. He must be have uh, good players who give can give a good pass. He must have people who can score goals. And I think now, on this moment, I think uh, for the Cosmos, uh, we have the good people on the right places. Niskins blended beautifully, and the team was playing inspired soccer with a magnificent midfield of Niskins, Davis, Bogicevic, and Beckenbauer. 1979 was a trying time for Franz Beckenbauer. Sidelined by a knee operation at the very outset of the regular season, Franz spent most of the campaign rehabilitating himself, but late in the season, he was back in the lineup. Yeah, thanks God, it was my first uh, very serious injury, the knee operation. And uh, thanks Dr. Niklas, he operated the knee. Uh, my knee is 100% all right, and so I can play, and so I'm nearly come to my old form. You know, I'm a really a soccer player and I love to play soccer and if you, you have a rest because you can't play, I, I didn't play for three months now and so I can watch the games from the bench or on TV and then it makes you you're feeling very painful because I, I want to play. The fourth member of the magic midfield, Vladislav Bogicevic, rolled up assists in record-breaking style with a new Cosmos mark of 23 assists during regular season competition. The goalkeepers with Errol Yassin and young American David Bursich sharing the early season assignments combined as an effective tandem to frustrate the opposition. In midseason, Hubert Birkenmeyer joined the club from Germany to establish himself as the number one keeper with his good hands and quick reflexes. The Cosmos take to the air for a late season matchup with the Los Angeles Aztecs. Every time the Cosmos travel, the interest in soccer builds, and Los Angeles is no exception. A reception to welcome the team is wall-to-wall -wall people, and the incomparable Pelé is still magnetic. To many, this game represents a Niskins versus Kreif confrontation, ex-teammates, now opponents. No, there's an, a personal uh, confrontation, not, but it's, uh, it's not only in that, that he play in that game and I, we play 11 against 11, so it's Cosmos against L.A. Johan Cruyff's talents have molded the Aztecs into a contender. The Cosmos, back at full strength, are riding a four-game winning streak. A match is a barometer for both teams, with the playoffs only two weeks away. With the attention centering on Kreif and Niskins, Ricky Davis steals the show with two goals and a tremendous all-around performance as the Cosmos topple the Aztecs 3-1. to one. The Cosmos finished the season with a flourish. Eight straight wins, first place in the Eastern Division, a new NASL record of 216 points. 
Indeed, the Cosmos are playing the finest soccer of their glorious history, peaking for the defense of their championship. The playoffs begin against a vastly improved Blizzard team in Toronto. Johan Niskins gets the Cosmos off and winging on the right foot. Seninho's clever ball control sets up Ricky Davis for an insurance goal as the Cosmos defeat the Blizzard 3-1. The Cosmos return home with their winning streak now at nine, and the Blizzard facing the heat of Cosmos country loyalists, rooting for the home team. Bogey and Ricky Davis feed Giorgio Quinalia with picture passing, and the Cosmos take the lead. Niskins and Bogey collaborate for a gorgeous give and go, with Bogey's return pass leading Niskins perfectly. The Cosmos blank the blizzard two to nothing and advance to the conference semifinals. Technical director Julio Maze and coach Ray Claveca have the Cosmos on a 10 game tear. But the Tulsa Roughnecks have ex-Cosmo Jack Brand in goal with high hopes of ending that streak in Tulsa. The combination of Jack Brand and a rugged all-out defensive performance turn the tide. The longest winning streak in Cosmo's history is over. The Roughnecks triumph with a solid 3-0 shutout. Back at Giant Stadium, help is on hand. Jack Brand and the Roughnecks will face not only the Cosmos, but the largest crowd of the year. Down a game, the Cosmos must win to stay alive. Tulsa three to nothing to tie the series at one game apiece and force a 30-minute mini game. The 76,000 plus fans have the Cosmos psyched up. Bogicevic penetrates the Tulsa defense and passes to Kinalia. Giorgio turns, shoots, and scores. Bim Reisbergen sends a beautiful ball downfield to Sinino. Sinino makes Brand to the ground, shoots. It's a goal. Kinalia adds a penalty shot goal, and the Cosmos roll up a 3-1 mini-game victory to advance to the National Conference Finals. The scenic beauty of Vancouver, British Columbia tends to obscure the danger blocking the Cosmos soccer bowl path. The Whitecaps defeated the Cosmos twice during the regular season. Their determined style of play now accomplishes something no other team has ever done. Three straight wins over the Cosmos. Not only does Vancouver shut out the defending champs, 
But in the final moments, Escondirian receives a red card, and following the game, Carlos Alberto is suspended by the league office. Cosmo's management contests the suspensions, but to no avail. On the brink of elimination, the Cosmos must oppose the Whitecaps without their defensive stalwarts. Down one to nothing, the Whitecaps capitalize on this free kick as John Craven scores. Zanino outraces the Vancouver defense. To Kinalia. Go! <laughs> Leading two to one, the Cosmos look for a clinching goal in the second half. But Vancouver's defenders hold on. Already hurt by the suspensions, the Cosmos are becoming decimated by injury, too, as Stewart and Niskins come out. Hoping to reach a minigame as quickly as possible, the Cosmos are denied that desire as Willie Johnston angles a header past Birkenmeyer. The match ends at 2-2, and overtime is next. The Cosmos threaten repeatedly, but can't break the deadlock. The overtime is scoreless, and a shootout will determine the winner of the game. Hubert Birkenmeyer prepares for the first white cap shooter, Willie Johnston. is the initial Cosmo shooter. Parks makes the save. Birkenmeyer faces Bob Leonard Ducey. Beckenbauer will attempt to tie it up. Yeah! Birkenmeyer against veteran Allen Ball. Great save, Birkenmeyer. Zanino tries to put the Cosmos in front. Zanino just beats the five-second clock. It's good. Carl Valentine aims to gain a tie for Vancouver. Terry Garvin can win it for the Cosmos. Garbett's clutch shot gives the Cosmos a 3-1 shootout victory. The defending champions are still alive, but there's precious little time for celebration. The minigame is next, with the winner going to Soccer Bowl, the loser going home. The Whitecaps attack, with Carl Valentine booming a powerful left-footed shot that hits the crossbar and appears to bounce outside the goal. Vancouver claims it is in. The Cosmos say, no way. The crowd is stunned. 
The referee hears the Cosmos pleas, consults with the linesman, and finally rules. No goal. Moments later, it's the Cosmos' turn, with Beckenbauer and Mark Liverich teaming up. The crowd celebration is in vain. This time, Liverich is called for a foul, and the Cosmos' goal is disallowed. The minigame, almost won by both teams, is scoreless. And the soccer marathon continues with a second shootout. Exhausted physically and mentally, the Cosmos suck in their guts for one more do-or-die effort. The Whitecaps break out in front as Bob Leonard Doozy, Carl Valentine, and Derek Posse convert. Returning to the lineup in spite of a painful shoulder separation, Johan Nieskens typifies the gallant Cosmo. Yeah! Terry Garbutt, the hero of shootout one, tries to keep the Cosmos close. Yeah! Trailing three to two. Hubert Birkenmeyer must stop Alan Ball or the Cosmos season is over. Birkenmeyer's save allows the Cosmos one final chance to tie the shootout. Nelsi Moraes is shooter number five. The exact same circumstance facing Carlos Alberto one year ago. Moraes' shot is in, but it's too late. The five-second clock runs out, and the goal does not count. After two games, one overtime, and two shootouts, the marathon of soccer is one second too short for the defending champions. The Cosmos' reign is over. True champions rebound from adversity. The Cosmos will be back better than ever with new stars, familiar stars, the guidance of world-renowned coach Hennis Weisweiler, and a fighting spirit that will not be denied. More Cosmos magic is on the way. barely 10 years old. We just started in 1971, and I think we've completed our first, the first important chapter of our career, and now we're about to embark on the second, which is, which will be known, I'm sure, in, in the books on soccer history as the days of Weissweiler at the Cosmos. Uh, quiet! Stay in the defense! Romero! Come back, come back, Mim! Slowly! Cabanas outside, Estremo, Cabanas, Estremo! Hey! Cosmos uh, for the future do it uh, to work with young players and I want to develop young uh, American uh, soccer players and then I want to make uh, the championship of United States with Cosmos. Coach Ennis Weisweiler assumed command of the Cosmos in the spring of 1980. Under his guidance, the Cosmos blended their unique talents into a cohesive unit, a total team that combined youth, seasoned veterans, and international superstars.
This is Cosmos country in the New Jersey Meadowlands, the mecca for professional soccer in America, where huge crowds continue to display their affection for the Cosmos. The popularity of the Cosmos resulted in a new North American Soccer League total attendance record, home and away, set by the Cosmos for the fourth consecutive year. Home attendance alone soared over the one million mark for the third straight season. On the field, Coach Weisweiler's youth movement was in full swing. 18-year-old Jeff Durgan, the Cosmos' first draft pick in 79, made an incredible transition from high school star to NASL Rookie of the Year. To be a teenager and starting for the Cosmos, I think, to most people, is amazing. To me, it's just playing again. And, and I've worked hard playing. It's just, it seems natural now. I didn't think it would come this soon. When I first came, I figured two years now, you know, I look back, I, I can't see waiting that long. Barry, this team, you know, in five years, the superstars of now will be gone. It will be a young Cosmos team, you know. We'll have a young team. We'll have a young team. we played together for a long time, and it will be good. Angelo DiBernardo was acquired in a trade with Los Angeles. He quickly became another young American newcomer to crack the Cosmos starting lineup. After tallying just one goal in his freshman campaign with L.A., Di Bernardo impressed Coach Weisweiler with an all-out style, and at the conclusion of his second season in the NASL, Angelo Di Bernardo was the Cosmos' fourth leading scorer. Julio Cesar Romero is a name to remember. Brilliant in the World Youth Cup Tournament for Paraguay, Romero was one of the most sought-after players in the world. The Cosmos won him over, and at the tender age of 19, he entered his initial NASL season. Now it was Romero's turn to win the fans over, and he was an immediate favorite. The Cosmos' second leading scorer as a rookie, Julio Cesar Romero, has a spectacular career in the future. Roberto Cabanas, another 19-year-old speedster, followed his close friend Romero to the United States and to the Cosmos. Joining the team after the season began made it extra tough to break into a power-packed starting lineup. But by season's end, Cabanas was an integral member of the Cosmos attack. One might expect a team with the Cosmos youth to lack the experience for international matches, but the Cosmos enjoyed super success against foreign opponents. Coach Hennis Weisweiler had to look on with mixed emotions as his new team beat the former team, Cologne, with Romero in a starring role. A popular attraction the world over, the Cosmos played on six continents in 18 countries during a 12-month period. To the delight of the home crowds, First Division teams could not defeat the Cosmos in the Meadowlands. Two Giorgio Quinalia goals, key to 3-2 win over Manchester City. Ricky Davis and Angelo Di Bernardo provide the assists on Quinalia's game winner. Warming to the task of international play, Quinalia registers a three-goal hat-trick against Roma of Italy. A most satisfying feat, as Roma is the arch-rival of Lazio, Giorgio's former team. Vladislav Bogicevic and Cabana set up Carlos Alberto for a superb header that locks up an impressive 5-3 victory over the Italian visitors. Argentina's number one team, River Plate, sporting six players from the World Cup champion roster, challenged the Cosmos in one of the most dramatic matches of the year. Terrific end-to-end -end action was highlighted by the strong goalkeeping of Lando Boro and Fio for River Plate, Hubert Birkenmeyer for the Cosmos. With less than eight minutes remaining, Juan Jose Lopez scored, and it appeared that the Cosmos were about to suffer a cruel disappointment for the second year in a row. In 1979, the Argentine World Cup champions took a 1-0 decision with a goal in the final two minutes. But the courageous Cosmos won't quit. Bogicevic's goal with only 58 seconds to play ties it up. The Cosmos and River Plate play a memorable 1-1 draw. 
maestro of the midfield, Bogey Bogicevic, became the all-time NASL assist leader, a fantastic accomplishment in only his third year for the Cosmos. Bogey was also totally comfortable and consistent in his role as one of the team leaders. It's difficult to come from another country and play here in the United States, especially in the Cosmos. The reason why we play so good now, the most players play like a team, the most players respect each other and nobody play going in a single individual game. And if we keep this way where we start, I think we have a chance to be again champion in the United States. I think this year's Cosmos team has been the best team the Cosmos has ever had. Uh, it's a, a really, truly professional team in every sense of the word, you know, starting from the top to the bottom. A professional among professionals, Giorgio Quinaya topped all NASL scores for the third time in his five-year Cosmos career. His regular season totals, 32 goals, 13 assists, 77 points in 32 games. On May 16th in Anaheim, California against the Serp, Giorgio became the greatest scorer in NASL history with goal number 102. Another of the marvelous Cosmos international stars, Carlos Alberto celebrated his fourth season in the NASL with a special day in his honor at Giant Stadium on August the 7th. I give you one of the great players in the history of the game, the number five of the Cosmos, Carlos Alberto. Thank you. I hope that you have enjoyed my playing as much as I have enjoying playing for you. I thank my friends in the Warner Communication, in the Cosmos, and the, all my friends out there. For your support, God bless you all. And I promise in my name, and I name of my teammates, to give this championship for you. Thank you very much. Congratulating Carlos on his day was the incomparable Pelé. And Pelé received a very special and significant award of his own during 1980 when a worldwide poll elected him the sportsman of the century. Pelé is Mr. World, but the Cosmos' newest international star was known as Mr. Europe. Francois Van Der Elt, a goal scorer extraordinaire for the Belgian national team, joined the Cosmos in time to make a significant contribution during the second half of the schedule. With the talent of Van Der Elt, combining with Quinalia, Di Bernardo, and Romero in the goal scoring department, the Cosmos' regular season aim was to capture the national conference to assure home field advantage for the playoffs. Ricky Davis, Bim Reisbergen, Bruce Wilson, Eskandarian, Alberto, Durgan, and Beckenbauer made the defense as effective as the offense, and the race for the NASL's best record became a two-team battle with the Cosmos chasing the Seattle Sounders. Goalkeeper Hubert Birkenmeyer was the rock of Gibraltar all year long, but his performances in the clutch were particularly outstanding. Seattle opened the season with a tremendous spurt to establish a 27-point lead over the Cosmos. But two solid wins over the Sounders narrowed the gap for the stretch. The Cosmos clinched their third consecutive Eastern Division crown on this overtime goal by Bogey. The Cosmos were now charging hard and breathing right down the Sounders' jersey. The National Conference title eventually came down to the final regular season contest. The Cosmos crushed Rochester 5-0 to edge out Seattle for the NASL's top position, 213 points to 207. A day in Cosmos country can be much more than a soccer game for Cosmos loyalists. It's an outing, a picnic, a tailgate party. It's just plain fun. Basketball fans need not believe that only Daryl Dawkins shatters backboards. Mark Liverich proves it can be done in soccer, too.
Bugs Bunny and the Cosmos girls always provide entertainment for the crowds. There are other special attractions that simply defy description. There's banner night, giveaways, tailgate contests, a whole lot more. And let's not forget soccer with a Cosmos team that's become one of the most respected and powerful soccer clubs in the world. I think uh, this team to win the NSL championship uh, has to stay compact together and play as a team like we have been doing uh, recently. Therefore, uh, you know, and also we must have a little bit of luck. You know, uh, if you don't have luck in soccer, you're not going to win anything. The Tulsa Roughnecks represent the first obstacle in the playoffs for a Cosmos team that desperately wants to reclaim the championship it surrendered in 1979. Two Kenaya goals on two assists from Romero sparked the Cosmos to a 3-1 victory in Tulsa. Back home for the return match against Tulsa, the Cosmos country crowd became a part of soccer history as Giorgio Kinaya scored seven. That's right, seven goals. single game for Giorgio Quinalia, a record that may never be broken. The Cosmos romp 8-1 to one and advance to the conference semifinals. <laughs> Texas Stadium, where the Dallas Tornado wait in ambush for the favored Cosmos. But the Cosmos strike quickly at the 11-minute mark as Romero scores the initial goal of the game. Only two minutes later, Van Der Els blasts a powerful shot inside the post and it's 2-0. Dallas fights back to tie it up in the second half, but with just two and a half minutes remaining, Cabanas and Ricky Davis assist Giorgio Quinalia on the last ditch game winner. A win at Giant Stadium and on to the conference final is next on the Cosmos game plan. But the Dallas Tornado have other ideas. The Tornado up.
upset the Cosmos three to nothing to force a 30-minute minigame. The Cosmos faithful fans rally the team with thundering ovations and non-stop cheering as the minigame drama unfolds. Beckenbauer's cross field pass is headed back to Bogey. Bogey's bullet shot deflects off Steve Petcher. Go! Eskandarian passes deep to Cabanas. Cabanas to Kinalia. Great move, Giorgio. Go! Romero corner kick. Giorgio header. Go! The Cosmos eliminate Dallas 3 to nothing in the mini game and advance to the National Conference Final. Pasadena, the Rose Bowl, and the Los Angeles Aztecs, conquerors of the Seattle Sounders, are next. Vander Elson Quinalia moved the ball over to Di Bernardo. Angelo shoots and a goal! The Aztecs get an equalizer as time expires in the first half, but Giorgio converts Romero's pass, and the Cosmos hold on to win it two to one. Coach Ennis Weissweiler and his Cosmos are one victory away from a trip to Soccer Bowl 80. The pregame locker room is all business, with memories of the Dallas upset only six days old. Therefore we go out and we march and we fight and then we play really good uh, soccer. Come on. Kinalia hat trick. The Aztecs bite the dust and it's on to Soccer Bowl. But for Franz Beckenbauer, one of the greatest stars in soccer history, Soccer Bowl will signify the end of his brilliant four-year career with the Cosmos. His incredible talent, professionalism, dedication, plus the aura of a champion on and off the field makes Franz someone very special. To commemorate his valuable contributions to the Cosmos, he was honored with a Franz Beckenbauer farewell game. Uh, thank you for everything, what you did for me in the last four years, because you always let me feel you like me. Thank you very, very much. Good health, good luck to you, and I love you. Thank you.
One of the reasons Franz Beckenbauer originally came to the Cosmos was to be a teammate of Pelé. Returning the compliment, the King of Soccer helped salute Franz by participating in the Beckenbauer farewell game. Late in the first half, against a glittering array of NASL stars, Pelé displayed his personal magic one more time. soccer will always be a major part of Cosmo's team history. <laughs> RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. is the setting for Soccer Bowl 80. The Cosmos versus the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. A sellout throng of more than 50,000 is on hand, but Cosmos fans are not only out in force, they're all psyched up for the big game. flag-waving, vociferous crowd of Cosmos faithful lends a European flavor to the North American Soccer League Championship match. Washington, D.C. may be a neutral site, but Cosmos partisans transform RFK Stadium into Cosmos Country South. For the Cosmos, Soccer Bowl 80 represents the chance to gain their third NASL championship in four years. For the Strikers, winners of three consecutive mini-games to reach the showdown, it's the opportunity they've been waiting for, to go head-to-head -head against the league's top-rated team with all the chips on the table. The first half is tightly marked with hustling defense and physical soccer. Bogey's shot is a near miss, and the first 45 minutes are scoreless. The Cosmos begin to establish control as the second half opens. Romero dribbles brilliantly and passes to Vanderels. Vanderels moves the ball over to Quinalia. Giorgio maneuvers for position, but Arsene Auguste pulls him down just outside the penalty box. Free kick Cosmos. Bogey to Kinalia. A shot. Rebound. Romero. Go! The strikers look for the equalizer, but Hubert Birkenmeyer is at the top of his game. The Cosmos reapply the pressure time and again. Cabana's shot just high. Bim Reisbergen moves the ball into the center to Ricky Davis. Davis feeds Kinalia. Giorgio moves to his left. Shoots a grass cutter. Go! To go lead the Cosmos continue the attack. Ben Beveren makes a great save on Cabanas. Kinalia hits the post. Beckenbauer to Romero. Romero to Kinalia, but Ben Beveren comes out and makes the save. Cabanas heads the ball back to Kinalia down deep. Kinalia turns, shoots, go!
unbelievable total of 18 goals for Giorgio Kinaya in seven playoff games. The final goal is fitting punctuation to a tremendous year. The Cosmos shut out the strikers three to nothing to capture Soccer Bowl 80. Three championships in four years for the Cosmos. Nobody does it better.